Okay, so welcome to this video where we are solving a question based on projectile motion. So the question goes like this. You throw a rock off a bridge. The initial velocity of the rock is 8 meters per second at an angle of 53 degrees above the horizontal. It takes 20, 12 seconds for the rock to hit the water below the bridge. So the first question is saying, how far from the base of the bridge does the rock land b i'm saying how high is the bridge c i'm saying what is the maximum height the rope reached and then d i'm saying how fast is the rope traveling before it hits the water level or rather the water so this question we are going to solve it as follows i want to display a simple diagram which illustrates this same question okay so this is a simple illustration we have this one which is the height from the base of water to where the rock is and we also have a distance in the x-axis from here up somewhere there and we have the initial velocity given at this point which is eight meters per second we've also been given the angle here which is 53 degrees so what you should always be understanding is if this has been projected at an angle like this one you understand that it will be moving in two different planes it will be moving in y and also in x whereby the initial velocity is going to point in the middle like this so meaning that you need to understand first of all how to make sure that you come up with the initial velocity in x as well as the initial velocity in y but what you should always understand is for the ball or rather for this rock to be at this given point meaning that it already covered a certain distance of which this is going to be considered as your initial distance so what you're going to understand the most is if the ball was, was to move it moves up and then it went beyond the original point of where it was meaning that now it is almost moving towards the negative so whenever you want to find maybe you are interested in finding what we call uh, the height of the bridge you have to make sure that this one has been expressed in a form of a negative reason being the ball went over and then it retained and uh, surpassed the original level of that same bridge the first question is trying to tell us or rather to ask us to say how far from the base of the bridge does the rock land they mean from this given point to where it lands how far is it going to cover so you find that once it reaches here, it will have the final velocity which is going to point like this. And this final velocity now, it is going to have two different uh, velocities again. The velocity in X as well as the velocity in Y. So what are you supposed to do for you to easily understand to say um, it covered this distance in X? It becomes very simple. Okay, so um, for us to fully understand how we are going to solve this question, let me take this camera diagram and put it somewhere here. We are going to understand that if you want to find the distance from here up somewhere there we say this is not a symmetrical shape like which is formed by the uh, by the projectile so for you to easily understand to say what will be the distance in x we are going to use a simple general expression for the range which is x it has to be equal to i'll say v initial cos theta t this is the formula we are going to use but before that we need to understand to say you have to know first of all the initial velocity is both in x and y i'll do like this so meaning that here we're going to have v initial in x which is going to be equal to v initial cos 53 then here we're going to have v initial in y this has to be equal to v initial sine 53 okay so if we are able to understand to say this is going to be the initial velocity in x then it will be very simple for you to even solve for what eh? for this as the question remember that saying it takes 12 seconds for it to move from this given point and hits the uh, the base of the water so the initial velocity in, in x we are going to find that it will be h cos 53 which has to be equal to and then i'll say the initial in y it has to be equal to h sine 53 which has to be equal to right so if you try to punch this on the calculator you find that if you say a h cos 53 we are getting 4.81 as the initial velocity in x sorry 4.81 as per second that is our initial velocity where in x 
whenever you try to go to the initial velocity in y you find that this is going to come out as 6.39 6.39 meters per second so these two are the velocities both in x and y respectively okay now if we proceed it will be very simple for you to, uh, to easily understand what is the actual length from the base of i mean from the uh, from the bridge to where the the, uh, the rock is going to land so you find that the first question which is a you say x has to be equal to what is this this has to be in short what is this entire part you have to follow what is given at this moment of time we'll say 4.81 then apply what is my time we're saying it has to be 12 seconds meaning that the distance from the base of the bridge to where the rock is going to land it has to be like this you say 4.81 multiplied by 12 we are going to find that the distance is giving us the answer as 57.72 meters this qualifies to be the first answer if you try to go to the second question they're saying how high is the bridge they want us to find the length from here up to the base of uh, up to the base of the bridge so if you have something like this i know that i take this for question b we know that for you to find this as the uh, the length we are going to use this formula which is s has to be equal to the initial t to say plus one over two a t square if you check clearly this particle or rather this rock has been projected initially upwards meaning that a that is acceleration in y we said acceleration in y has to be what to be negative g if you come on this moment of time remember we are dealing with the y distance meaning that this is going to be a y but since the particle went up then it went below the original point of where it was projected from you find that this now is going to be negative reason being it covered a positive distance and then it also started moving towards the negative side so you are going to write it like this i'll say negative y has to be equal to where there is this you put the initial velocity in where in y so i'll say uh, the initial velocity in y it has to be what it has to be a v initial sign theta say t so since this has been considered to be negative due to the fact that the object was initially projected upwards it will be minus one over two i'll say g t square now now it becomes very simple for you to easily understand to say why are we doing it like this it's because if you check the particle had been okay was projected from this given point whereby the distance which it covered already we don't know which is the height at which it was taken at first so you find that since it moves up and then it will reach at this given point now meaning that it has covered the full distance remember if it moves up and it gets back to the original point of where it was thrown from it will have a distance of zero so once it starts moving towards the part which is not considered as part of where it moved it will now start moving towards the negative side that's why we put this one to be negative in short even if a particle was to be thrown like this it went up like this and then it went below you find that still the distance from here up somewhere here if you want to find it it has to be considered to be the negative distance just like that all right so we proceed we try to proceed we know what this one is we know this which is six point say negative y has to be equal to i'll write my 6.39 here say multiply by 12 minus 1 over 2 and i'll say multiply by 9.8 i'll multiply this by 12 square we are going to have negative y which is going to be equal to if you try to punch this on your calculator which is 6.39 you multiply this by 12 we are getting 76.68 so we are getting 76.68 minus if we try to multiply here you find that once you divide this by half or rather you multiply this by half we are going to get 4.9 4.9 you multiply this which is multiplied by 12 square we are getting 705.6 we are getting 705.6 now you find that once you subtract here i think you are going to get a negative answer that's why it will now become 
the actual distance. Remember, we don't have the distance in your T in negatives. So you, you, you place a negative to show that the particle is now moving towards the negative part. That's why we have to place it like this. If you leave it like that, meaning that it will give you a negative answer, of which we can't get a negative um, height. So if you say 76.68 minus 705.6, what answer are you going to get? We are getting negative 628.92. The bridge was very long, like it was very, very high in short. So you find that the answer is going to be written like this now. Negative 628.92. You cancel these my negatives, you find that y is going to be equal to, if you just round off here, you find that it will be 629 meters. This was, uh, this was the height at which, or maybe this was the length, or rather this was the, uh, the length in short for the bridge, how high this is, was the height for the bridge. Okay, so these are the things, mostly this one, this is one now people they are normally making mistakes because they, they don't consider this one to be the negative once a particle goes up and then it retains and it moves below the original point. This becomes the original point. So whenever they ask you to say what is the maximum height, the maximum height has to be the height from here up to somewhere here. Yeah, that's the maximum height the ball is going to have because it goes up then it will also move up somewhere here so the maximum height has to be the distance from here up somewhere there now if you check you find that here it makes a symmetrical shape once you cut at this given point it makes a symmetrical shape for this common given height and yet we already know the height which is covered at this given part which is the height for what for the uh, for the bridge we to find the height which is going to be given at this moment of time. Just use the maximum height formula and you are going to find that it will give you what? It has to give you the height here plus that one and you'll be able to find the maximum height just like that. All right, we try to calculate. We try to calculate. So I'll say C. I'll start with the maximum height and say H has to be equal to. Uh, we are having B initial square sine square theta over 2 g. So I'll say h has to be equal to, we, in short, this formula, no need of you including g to be a negative just because the projectile initially was projected upwards. We got this equation during derivation of this, so we already considered it as what? As a negative. We already considered it as a negative. So long we are using those formulas, projectile, I mean uh, trajectory, the maximum height, the range, time of flight, g has to be taken like the way the number is. So you find that here, if you write 8 square, I'll say sine 53, I'll square everything over 2, multiply by 9.8. Meaning that maximum height, I'll say maximum height, has to be equal to, I'll say, 629 plus the answer you're going to get this moment of time. So we try to punch this one. We're going to have 8 square multiplied by, okay, say open, sine 5, 3, close, square. Now divide this by 2 multiplied by 9.8. Now close. So here I'm getting, now uh, that is 2.1. Meter. Now we try to add this to that one. We have 629 plus 2.1. Definitely, we are getting the maximum height as 631.1 meters. As simple as that. Okay, now the thing is, it, come, it becomes something which is so challenging whenever they ask you to say how fast they mean what would be the final velocity once it reaches at this given point. So remember, we are saying the velocity in x has to be maintained. The initial velocity you're going to have here will be the same as the final velocity in x-axis. But in y, it has to change due to the what? The change in the height. So what you're going to understand is this. For you to easily define this, I'll start with the initial, I mean the final velocity in x has to be equal to the initial velocity in x, which is given as, okay, remember we got the initial velocity in x, which is 
Okay, so the initial velocity in x has, has to be considered as 4.81 meters per second. It will be the same thing because in x-axis we are saying velocity has to be kept constant. In x, velocity has to be kept constant. Now, the thing is we need to find the final velocity in y. In y. I'll say final has to be equal to v initial in y plus, uh, plus a t. So if we check this one has to be g, and this one we are going to consider the initial velocity in y. I'll say v final has to be equal to v initial sine 53 minus, because this one, the particle shows that it was projected upwards initially by moving like this. Okay, so we're going to have g, g. I'll say v final has to be equal to, I'll say 8, sine 53 minus 9.8 multiplied by 2. V final has to be equal to the possibility of getting a negative velocity will be very high because it went below the point of what? The point of being thrown. So if it moves up, well, you find that here it was supposed to rest. So once it moves beyond now, coming down here, it might have a negative velocity. Okay, so I'll say H sine 53 so for this one we are getting 6.39 minus 9.8 multiplied by 12 we are getting 117.6 we try to subtract we say 6.39 minus the answer we are getting the final velocity as negative 112.1 sorry 11 has to be negative 111.21 meters per second. And we know how to combine vectors. We know how to combine for us to find the resultant vector. We know that this thing is going to be like this. Yeah, this thing is going to be like this. Reason being, it has the positive part and also we are going to have a negative part. So we find that this one is going to be negative 111.21. This one has to be 4.81. That is if you sketch on the x y plane. So in short, they just want us to have the final velocity, which is going to be made uh, in between somewhere there. So you say v has to be equal to vx square vy square. v has to be taken as, let's say, 4.81 square plus negative 111.21 square meaning that the final velocity the ball is going to have has to be like this i'll start with the, uh, the first part i'll say 4.81 square plus negative 111.21 square like this so if we square we find that we're going to get this to be the answer under the root so if you say square root the answer we are getting the final velocity as 111.31 meters per second square. So this has to be the end of this same question, as simple as that. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more videos.